So let's take this uh, image here. I've got a uh, roulette wheel and I want to make it spin. This is the kind of job that three or four years ago would have been an absolute nightmare to do. I would have had to take this wheel, distort it into a circle, and then use the Photoshop spin blur, and then undistort it back into the shape we want. Now, I've already made this into a smart object. We can go to filter, blur gallery, and spin blur. And I can pick this up, I can move the center of it over here at the base of whatever that spinning thing in the middle, any veteran gamblers in the room who know what that thing is called? No one's admitting to it. You all know what it's called. This is not telling me. And I can grab the handles and pull it right out to the size of our roulette wheel. There we go. And we can adjust it until it fills our whole space. And it's uh, rather nice with the spin blur filter is that near the edge, I can feather the effect so I can have it softening as it gets towards the edge so you don't get a hard cut off. And you can change the amount of this blur. Let's take it down a bit. You can even turn on some strobing. So when I turn the strobing on, it's as if you get this, uh, this strobe light flashing so you can still see some of those numbers. And I think, yep, that's pretty good. I'm going to go for that, so I'm going to hit enter to apply that. And there it is applied. But, of course, the problem is that it's blurring that central spinning column, um, which it shouldn't do. But because it's a smart object, every filter you apply comes with its own mask. And this is not a layer mask, but it's a filter mask. So when I paint on the mask in black, then it's going to hide the effect of that filter on this layer. So now I can paint this out all the way down. And it can help you paint out more than you need. And then it's easy now to paint in white. Shortcut for painting in white. X, I want to swap the foreground and background color. So I said hit X and I can paint in white to reveal the filter over those. Yep. Um, so that would re no, I can't because that would reduce the opacity of the entire layer. Um, and I, I want to apply the filter at full strength to the wheel, but not just not to that just uh, that one column. And if you come back to this and you think, OK, that's not bad, but I don't really like that sort of juddering effect that the strobe flashing was giving, I can just open this up. And because it's a smart object, uh, it's, sorry, wrong one, I can double click the smart filter. And because it's a smart object, it's going to open that for me and let me modify it. So let's take the strobing off there so we get a much smoother blur going around. That's good. And I hit enter to apply that, and then it's put it back in. So turning objects into smart objects gives you the ability to add however many filters you want, and then either swap out the uh, layer and apply the same filters, or modify those filters, or control how they appear. <laughs>